Hi, uh, welcome to uh, using a scientific calculator for a uh, radio amateurs exam. Just a quick video to uh, help a few people that were struggling at my local radio club um, with their full radio amateurs exam. So it's basically going over this uh, this page, uh, a bit closer this page, and this page of the uh, examinations book. Okay, so the first thing the uh, the, uh, the the article or the, the, uh, the book deals with in the scientific calculator section is resistors and capacitors. Specifically, uh, resistors in parallel and capacitors in series. So we'll start with those, and we'll start with going through the example in the book. I'll do my best to explain it as we go through, um, and try and try not to confuse you as we go. So right, let's uh, let's be on with it. Okay, so hopefully you all know, very basic first of all, there are two resistors in series first of all, resistor 1 and resistor 2, and we want to replace those with one resistor on resistor RT. Hopefully we all know that the value of resistor T has got to be equal to resistor 1 plus resistor 2. And that's because you have to go through this one, resistor 1, and resistor 2, to go through both one or the other, the tosses is just added. Okay, I'm clear with all of that. The first question we're trying to answer is what if the resistors are not in series, but they're in parallel? So, resistor 1 and resistor 2. and connect them in parallel. If I want to replace that with one value of resistor, resistor value RT, how do I go about doing that? What value do I need to replace that? And so that's the first thing I'm going to try to answer. Okay, so the reciprocal of the value of RT equal to the reciprocal of the value of R1 plus the reciprocal of the value of R2. And this carries on, so if we added another resistor here, the third resistor, R3, and connect that in, then we add a 1 over R3 to the end. So we're adding up. And this carries on if you had 12 of them, plus, seven, plus 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way along. Okay. So, first example in the book, we have a resistor, 1200 ohms, a resistor, 1300 ohms, resistor of 820 ohms. Okay. And I want to replace that with one resistor. R2. So this is our R1, R2, and R3. Okay. So the book gives you some information. It gives you some uh, text about that. And I'll give you a process flow here that uses the, uh, the uh, Casio FX83 style calculator. So that's one of these calculators. Uh, try and get it on the screen a bit better. And some light as well. You can capture the light a bit better. There we go, one of those. Right. So, And working this out, the first thing we need to do is one as we key in the value of resistor one. Okay. And if we go back to the formula, just jot that up here again. R1 plus one over R2 plus one R3. 
we've put in value of R1. But we need to have the reciprocal of it. So we key in this. And on the calculator, there's a button there that says x to the power of minus 1. Come on this calculator. If we catch the light, the button is here. the log button. It's there underneath the mode and set up button here. The button's got x to the power of minus one. X with a little minus one in the top right corner. And that's the reciprocal button we'll be using that a lot for this bit. Okay. And so it looks Key that in. Again, the reciprocal is the x to the power of minus 1. Add it again. The last number is 820. Finally, the reciprocal button once again. So we now just key this in, press the reciprocal to make it 1 over that. Okay. So, lastly, here. We press equals. And what that's given us is the reciprocal of the total we need. We need. Okay. If we take that value and apply the reciprocal, the x to the minus 1 again, we'll get our value of RT. So to do that, press the ANS button. The ANS button is at the bottom of this calculator screen. You can catch the light better. Uh, is that, there we go. So it's this button here at the bottom. Mix of the equals. You press that. You press the reciprocal button. That flips our equation up and brings RT to the top. You press equals again. And we should get R. 14. Okay. Hopefully, if we've got that one, right, we'll give it a go. Okay, so let's twist things around a bit so I can see what I'm doing. That's 1 over RT, that's the reciprocal of RT. Okay, so we've got the first, the currently, the answer that's the top of the ball, now if I tilt the camera a bit, then at the very top line of the ball, that's the line we've just done. So we need to go to this one. So the next thing we do is answer reciprocal again, press equals. Now notice let's flip the equation, flip the fraction up the other way. Pressing the SD button gives us 424.7.47. Uh, sorry. Right. Okay, let's put the camera back. Put the other way up here. There we go. Right. So that gives us a value here of 424.47. Okay. Let's write that here. So our answer. The end of this is four two four. I'll read the whole screen off. Four seven zero five eight eight 
eight two is the answer that I get in the calculator. Now that's far too long. So rounding to the nearest diagonal for all practical purposes are here, the decimal point is here. So rounding here, look at the next number up. It's less than five, so we've just rounded it down. So our value here of RT is four hundred and twenty-four. Hopefully it's good, it's good across the check. We haven't made any, any silly mistakes, and it's always worth checking that. Okay, and the answer sheet here says 424 ohms. We can get that on the shot. So we're looking at the number here. Okay, 424 ohms. We know that's reasonable because this 424 ohms has got to be less. And the smallest value. The smallest value is 820. The total for the three in parallel is always going to be smaller than the smallest one. So this one here, the, the, the 424 ohms, is smaller than the 820. So we know it seems about right. If you get numbers that are bigger than any of these, or bigger than even the smallest one, then you know you've done something wrong. Conversely, if you look at these numbers here, they're all kind of nearly yeah, thousand in the thousands range now. 1,200, 3,300, 820. They're all big numbers, so you're not expecting to get seven ohms here. You're not expecting to get a million. Um, obviously, it's got to be less than that, you just said, so you would know two ways there. Okay, so we'll follow this process through again. Um, we'll change the value slightly and uh, give it another go. Right. Scrap this. Start again. Let's grab the calculator. Here we go. So we'll do two resistors this time. And resistor one. And resistor two. Connect them. Again, in parallel here, and we've got the calculator to make us a nice random number. Okay, so it's pits 114 ohms and 368 ohms. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm going to type in this time. Let's put the formula up here a second 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over. R2. And so, R1, first of all, 114, got the reciprocal button, plus 368, reciprocal button, press equals. So, right, here we go. 114 reciprocal plus 368 reciprocal. And at this point here, I get 241 over 20,976. This is incidental, this doesn't mean anything. Uh, this is just to let you know you're on the right track. So if you don't get this number, this fraction, you're uh, You've messed up this bit here. I should just point out at this stage, I guess, that if your calculator expresses this number as a decimal, you can press this button here, this button. I'll try and draw it up here for you. It says S D with an arrow like that. And for me it's just above the delete button. So that's uh, this uh, SD button here, it's about here on the calculator. There we go. That's that button, and if I press that, you'll see we go from the fraction to a decimal. Okay, and that is equal to 0 0.0114893, and it goes on. So if you've got a number that looks somewhat like that, like the fraction, you're on the right track. <coughs> if you go back and check this bit here, you should be getting this number now. 
We assume you are. The next thing to do, that, that number, the one we just worked out, this fraction here, was 1 over RT. So as we want RT, we need to use the reciprocal button to get it back. So, use the answer button and the reciprocal, which will go from a 1 over RT to RT. And then we're going to press equals again. That's going to give us number RT, which is what we're going to replace this for. Okay, so let's do that. Answer, reciprocal, equals. And you'll notice now the first thing the calculator has just done is turn that fraction up the other way. That's what the reciprocal does. It swap this number we had here, put it up the other way. And now using the, uh, the S to D button again, you can uh, calculate a value here, 87.033. So let's get rid of that. Okay, this is the answer that I've just got. And again, I would round that at the decimal point here. So let's come to the decimal point, this point here. I look at this number, I'm rounding it. It's less than 5, so that stays the same. If this was 5, then I'd make that the next number, so that'd be, I'd go 88. Less than 5, so I've got 87 ohms. And that's the value there. And again, it looks reasonable. It's a similar sort of size to the smallest number. It's less than that. We knew it was going to be less than 114. We've got 87, so it's looking good. Okay. Let's just quickly show you how I've worked that out on the calculator screen. Come over here, hop back again. Right. So let's just run through this one quickly with you. Okay, get the get ones on the screen here. Hopefully. So, 140 reciprocal plus 368 reciprocal. Press the equal button, gives me the time of fraction. Okay, it may give you that depending on what your calculator's set to. So you can see also this decimal number here, pressing the S slash D button. This button here will change the to it. Okay, it doesn't matter what this is at the moment, we're interested in the reciprocal of it now. So we press answer, reciprocal equals. Let's turn that fraction upside down for us. When we change now to a decimal, we get the answer 87.073. Sorry, 0373 444 carries on. But we're looking at this number here, it's less than 5, so 87 ohms is the answer. And you can see that's what we've got on the board. Okay. I'll quickly go through one more of those. If I had the pen, we could. So at the moment these are ohms, 8 ohms, this is our R1 and our R2. Reciprocal button equals answer button reciprocal button equals. We're looking to get a number here, this gives us our RT. We want to get a number, it's going to be less than 8. We know it's less than 8, it's got to be smaller than the smallest number. So, without Going through this in the ball straight to the calculator. So being at a precarious angle, here we go. Right then. 
and get it on the other screen. So eight, reciprocal, plus two, plus three, reciprocal, equals. Answer, reciprocal, equals. 7.754 here. Yeah. Okay. So, we've got 7.754. Carries on. Okay, so we knew it was going to be less than that because of the comparative sizes. Eight ohms is much smaller than this is, so the number's pretty close to eight. It's mostly this one pulling this number, but obviously it's going to be less than that because it's two current paths. So it's going to be less than eight. We've got seven point seven here. Okay, so if we was to round this to what the nearest ohm, that would round up. So to the nearest ohm. It's eight ohms. Okay, but as eight ohms is one of our one of our beginning resistors, probably a bad choice using this one, but it was randomly given to us, so you can't choose that. Okay, so I would go with rounding probably after a couple. So I would go for seven. I'd go for one to one decimal place. So I'm going to round mine here, this line here. So I look at this one. It's a five, so it rounds up, and I get a seven point eight ohms. Okay. One more. This time we'll use the SI prefixes as well. So R1 and R2 as before. I want their values here this time. Okay. So twelve, and we'll say kilo arms this time. Two forty seven kilograms. Okay, so we've now got this uh, kilo factor here. We've got to take into account if you look in your in your uh, handbook, you'll see that the kilo means times 10 to the power of 3. Yeah. If we write this out, we can quickly show you what that means. This is 12,000, which is 12 times 1,000. There's three zeros here. There are three uh, zeros there. And so that gives us the three. Not mathematically true, but it's a nice enough little trick. And that also works if this had been just as a side here 12 mega ohms. That's, uh, that's not 10, that's 12. Twelve mega ohm, which is twelve times a million. Six zeros here. That tells us that mega is times ten to the six. So this comes up to there. Okay, so that bit done. Scratch that bit out a second. And these are all listed in the book. Just something you have to learn 
So here, kilo is times 10 to the 3, mega times 10 to the 6, giga times 10 to the 9, my dodgy handwriting. And going back the other way, you've got milli, which is times 10 to the minus 3, micro is times 10 to the minus 6, and nano is times 10 to the 9, and pico times 10 to the minus 12. Hopefully you can still see those on the board, yep, yeah, just about. Okay, so this is yeah, the middle point. So these numbers are getting bigger, these numbers are getting smaller. So notice here we use m twice, lowercase m milli, capital M, mega. These numbers are in the, the book, they're just something you're gonna have to you have to learn. You'll commonly see these ones for capacitors, uh, capacitors and uh, inductors, that kind of thing. Uh, and these ones for things like frequency and resistors. These tend to tend to work with big resistors and small small capacitors and inductors. So that's where they come from. Okay. The next thing next, I'm pointing out to the button on the calculator that allows you to input those. So on your calculator, the button, it'll either say that or it will say exponent. We'll do a fucking right. Here we go. Let's have another go at that. And again. I will say exponent. Does the same thing. This one's a mathematical word, that's more what it does in maps. Okay, on here I've got my calculator's got this type. Next to the answer button, the answer button is here, ANS, the equals button, just the left, right of that. This button, you can see it on this calculator, is just here. Catch the right on it there, the button, just there. Centre of the bottom row. Okay. So, how do we do this? This is something you need to remember, the formula doesn't change, but it just changes how you put it in. So, R1 plus 1 over R2. And before, when we put R1 in, we type the number in, so type 12. And now we have to put the K in first, so we push the button, times 10. Yeah. That's alright, no worries. Sorry about that. Uh, so we'll do 12 times 10 to the x. Uh, and then we put the x value in we want after that. So here, kilo is 1000, there's three zeros. So we put three in. Okay. 12, the exponent button times 10 to the x, and then 3. That's the first bit. And now we put the reciprocal in as we did before. So this is the x and the minus 1 button. So this bit here becomes our new value because we're putting the k in now. So these two bits here times 10x followed by the 3. They give us the K, and the 12 is the number before then. If we change this to the 6, it gives us an M. The M for Mega. Mega was a million and six zeros. The micro is minus 6. So here we would put. Number six, but micro ohms is going to be pretty small. Okay, 
So, shrink that again. Take our number, 12, times 10 to the x, or, or the exponent button, and then our 3 per kilo. And then finally, because it's a reciprocal, press the x minus 1 button. Okay? So that has entered us the very first resistance value. Clear this up now. Put the whole thing in. So, where's uh, the space available? What's going on at the bottom? 12. That button, 3. That's bonus. Remember, you're pressing this one for the kilo. The K, the thousand multiplier, and this one, the reciprocal, to bring it onto the bottom. 47 now. 47. K. That brings it onto the bottom, so that's done. And from then on, it's the same as before. So it's equals. Answer. Exponent and equals again. Let's come over. Try to show you that in the calculator now. Alright, here we go then. So turn it on. All that to sleep. Here we go. So 12. This button here. Give you the exponent. 3. And that's it we got. Plus 47 3 for kilo and then reciprocal equals you can see what I've got so far there okay, I'm just putting it right on the ball for you that number so you can see I'm getting. So at the end of this line, when I press equals here, I get a nice ugly fraction of 59 over 5, 6, 4, 0, 0, 0. So I can't see the video. 50. I'll tell you the right numbers now. 59. Over 564,000. Okay, so that's the intermediate step here. If you don't get this, on a fraction, quickly pressing the S to D button. It's the same as 1.0460 dot dot times 10 and minus 4. Don't worry about what that means, but if you don't get this or that, then you've gone wrong somewhere with this step. So make sure you've put both the exponent and the reciprocal in. You notice here this 10 to the minus 4 is a small number, which is what you expect. Okay, so let's lose that. <coughs> Lean you back over again. So here's back where we are again. So we've got that fraction, which is still on the board. Same as before now, answer, reciprocal and equals. It's the same fraction but up the other way. Just turn it over. The top's at the bottom, the bottom's at the top. Pressing the S to D button, and that changes the value. And so we're getting quite a big number here now. 9,559. So the number I get here at this point is 9559. Point three two two oh three four. It's a big number, so I rounded the nearest ohm. Looking at this number here, it's not going to three is not going to round up. So the answer would stay. It's come up here. It's nine five five three. Okay. 
Now this for my items here. So this is the value of these two resistors here. And the parallel give us that. We're looking for a number that's smaller than the smallest one. Okay. So this has given us the answer in ohms here. You can see this number's in ohms. We've worked out that. And we've got this number here. Uh, 900. 9,553. Okay, if you want to know what that is in kilograms, there's a button on the calculator that says engineering. The button says E uh, N G. That button there. If you meet between the 7 and 8, and the, ne the next row above 7 and 8 between the two of them, and that's the button. And what this does, it will make it into the kilo or mega prefix, but it will give you it in the number notation that we just talked about. So if I press that on here, it immediately gives me times 10 with a little 3 means kilo or kilo kilograms yeah so we can rewrite this as 9.559 kilo ohms and we see it's less than a 12 so it's looking looks reasonable reasonable value. In all seriousness, probably 9.6 kilo ohms. You're never going to get that. 9.6. Enough accuracy considering we was. So 9.6 acceptable answer. That one not wrong, but 9.6 is nicer. Nice and clean. Okay, so that's those bits there. Actually, show you the yeah. Uh, sorry, that's better. Okay, leave that down there. I could show you here on the calculator. Oh, so here's this number when we did the minus one. Make that into our decimal. It's nine five five nine point three two two two. This is in ohms, nine point five kilograms, nine point six eight rounds. I'm pressing the engineering button here. Let's see. Let's change to 9.5. If you keep pushing it forward, if you push shift from that, you can see that it's gone to mega ohms. It's 0 0.0095 mega ohms. You can go back to kilo, back to that, and you can draw up to the milli ohms now. Jumps back and forth. Okay. When it says times 10 to the 0, that's just no scaling at all, so that's nothing at all. It's 9,559 ohms. Okay. Finally, all of this equation applies to resistors in parallel. Also applies to capacitors in series. So, I trust the calculator back. 
So if I have capacitor 1, capacitor 2, and I want to replace sorry, capacitor 1 and capacitor 2, and I want to replace that with one single capacitor, capacitor total, I use the same formula. We change the other C's for R's, and R's for C's rather. Capacitor 1 plus 1 over capacitor 2. With resistors in parallel and capacitors in series. So through one, through another in series, the resistors we were working with also splits into two and goes around them. So very quickly. Razor. Get the calculator to make its two values. We'll use the, the exponent notation, or this times 10 notation as we used before. Okay, here we go. First one is 519. I'm going to call that nanofarads. Next one is 359 nanofarads. Doesn't matter if this is picofarads, it makes, makes little difference. You just put the exponents in as we, as we did a moment ago and it will all work out. So, here we go. 1 over CT is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So these numbers go in. 519 exponent button times 10 to the power of x button and nano is minus 9 next one 359 nanofarads so times 10 to the x the exponent button again and again minus 9 So what have we forgotten here? Forgotten to make them in reciprocals. Okay, I nearly caught myself out there. The kind of silly mistakes you've got to go for, let's start that again. So 519 times 10 exponent minus 9. What we forgot last time? The reciprocal button. Plus 359 times 10 to the x button, minus 9 for nano, and once again the reciprocal button, x to the power of minus 1. Good. Okay. Alright, simple process again. Equals. That'll give us a number. So what does that give us? Let's just quickly calculate that first. This way, if you're going wrong, you'll uh, see where uh, 359 so 10 to the minus 9, the power of minus 1. Okay, and this time it doesn't have a nice fractional form, I get that. 1722 Okay. This number's big because these two numbers are small. Now is small. Okay. So. It's 4,712,297.594. Okay. It's the intermediate step. We then tip that out the other way. So, onto the button. Reciprocal next to the power minus one. And then the answer button again, and that gives us the value for CT. So let's just do that quickly. Answer. Minus one. Okay. And this gives me straight away, right up here, point one, two, two, one, oh, seven, oh, six, two, times ten to the minus seven. Now, the first thing you notice. This 10 to the minus 7, bit of a math number, it's not one of the standard ones, they're multiples of 3, 
So the nearest two times 10 to the minus 6 gives us micro, times 10 to the minus 9 gives us nano, which is what we started with. So we'll opt for nano. We need to use the engineering button now. Pressing it once for me converts that to nano. 212.21076 times 10 to the power of minus 9. We recognise that bit now as nano. So the answer we get 212.2 nano barrels. Okay. And we know smaller, I mean the smallest one, capacities in series as it is decreases because effectively the gap here between the two plates has got bigger. Uh, a rough hand wave explanation. So we know that we've got to bridge two gaps now so the capacitance has got smaller. It can be smaller than the smallest one, but bigger than the biggest one. So we know it's, it's about right. So that's reasonable. Okay, so around behind the camera a second. Just going to be flashing that again, showing you the calculator screen. This time I'll lean you forward again. Here we go. All right. So, can't really have the numbers on the board on the calculator visible, I apologise. Right, so, 5, 1, 9, times 10 to the power of minus 9. Reciprocal. So, uh, 519 times 10 to the minus 9 is nanocards. Reciprocal plus 359 times 10 to the power of minus 9. 359 nano. Reciprocal again equals. So, this is the number we talked about. It's big because the capacitive value is small. So. Okay, next thing. Let's do the reciprocal, so answer reciprocal. I can't see. I've done answer reciprocal equals. And it gives me 2.12 times so something minus 7. And the minus 7 thing is pretty useless, so we press the engineering button. It comes to the minus 9. And we know minus 9 is nano. So it's 212.2 nanofarads. Look at the next one before that, it's a 1, so it stays as a 2. We've got 2.1.2 nanofarads. 2.1.2.2. Okay. Let's come over here now. Okay, so the next thing that the book deals with is component values. So, going at this page of the book. The next thing it deals with is component values. We've just done this here. This is the power of capacities in series. We've gone through several examples of these using the example that I give you in the book and a few of our own as well as you can see. We've also done, well, the next thing the book does rather is component values, but I think I think it'd be a bit easier if we go for the re reactance and resonance bit first because this one is a manipulation of this, this formula here. So if we go for this formula here, 1 over 2 pi root LC, which is pretty poorly printed, um, then we can easily get this one for, get this one for later on. So hold on and we'll put your seatbelt on. We'll give it a go. Not like the pen next. Here we go. So And write that a bit, a bit better. 2 pi square root of LC. Okay, so just to quickly clear up before we go any further, square roots of LC. So this is L times C all inside the square root here. People write these differently. Your calculator might do this. With brackets instead, you might just put the line above it, L times C, like that, and the line stops above it. Where I write them is I always put the bar at the end to let you know where it closes, but you know, just uh, just tradition. It depends how you how you learned. 
these are all the same thing. So on a calculator, you're likely to see the square root sign L times C, and the line will just stop over that N. Or the calculator will do this, and you need to put it inside brackets. Okay. So how I would do this is slightly different from how the book says it. I think it would be a bit easier and it should make that this subtle difference here and important with the brackets uh, if, you, if you follow my way, which I obviously do. Um, so rather than doing it with this daunting formula, we're going to take L and C, multiply them together, L times C. We'll then take the square root of L times C, multiply it by 2 and by pi, and then we'll take the whole answer for this, and we'll take it to the minus 1 as we did before. So that's the roughly you know, the quickest, the easiest way rather to do it um, mathematically, and then now to get that into the calculator. So let's grab the sheet and we'll go from the values that they use say daunting you, we'll uh, keep the same value so we can easily check. And, uh, I've not gone through this before, so hopefully we're, uh, we'll be good. Okay, so it says, look at the sheet here, it says, suppose the question shows a tube circuit using a 45 microhemi inductor and a 220 puff capacitor. So let's draw it first, I always love to draw it. We've got an inductor and a capacitor here. This is our L, this is our C. And we're told L is 45 microhemries and C is 220 picofarad. So from experience, I can tell that they're, you know, they're reasonably same values. Um, the values that you're likely to find in the circuit. Um, so only during the uh, on board. Sort of medium wave, so um, we can go about doing that. So the formula we need, the resonance is one over two pi square root of L C. It's a bit far up the board, isn't it? Anyway, let's just bring that back down a bit. That's how we can see it. Here we go. Two pi L C. Okay. It's still equally high, but I think you can see it now. Is that okay? Yeah, that will do for a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is we'll take the 45, we'll take our value of L to 45. Remember what we did with the exponents before? Times 10 to the x, and then micro. Your reference is times 10 to the minus 6. Pico is times 10 to the minus 12. And you need to know these. This value here, you've just got to know. Okay. So, minus 6. Okay. So that's L. This is our value for L. So in here, the L is done. We need to do the C next. So times by C, 220, times 10 to the X button, minus 12, 12 is Pico. And again, you've just got to know that. Okay, and that gives us our C. Right, so that's L and C multiplied by each other. So, my advice and, and the book's advice is to press equals, and that will give you a number. If I pop to the calculator, hopefully I can tell you what it is. All right. Bear with me while I run out of hands. So, 45 minus 6 times 220 10 to the minus 12. Okay. 
double check. I get 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 50. Okay, that's at the intermediate stage. Doesn't mean anything at all. That's just L times C. The next thing we want to do is to take the square root of it. So, okay. So the next thing we want to do is press the square root button. So on this calculator, I've got a button that does this. Let's block this field inside it. Okay, so that tells me whatever I do, it goes in here. Okay, so I press that button. I then press the answer button. And it takes this value, puts it in here, and then I press the equals button and square it. So at this point, I've got 9.94. Uh, this right now. 9.94. 9, 8, 7, 4, 3, 7, 1, times 10 to the minus 8. Again, means nothing, but we've now done LC square rooted. Okay. So the next step is to do answer times it's clear with you. Answer times two times pi. Okay. So on here, answer times two, quite easy. Pi, to get pi on this calculator, you're pressing shift, and then you're pressing the times ten to the power of x. So you're pressing the shift button and then this button. If you look carefully at this button, you'll see it's got a little pi just above it. On the calculator's front panel, not on here in orange. Take that away, and pressing the shift button gives you that return. So, what I'm typing here is uh, a round shift button followed by a times 10 to the x button, and that gives me pi. Okay, so that's what I'm typing. And you'll see that in a moment, I'll go through it on the calculator screen. Okay, so times 2 times pi. So that's now done the whole of the bottom equation. Right. Oh, so times 2 times pi. But at this point here, I get 6.25166. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Obviously, you won't get anything until you press equals. And at that point, you will get 6.25169044 times 10 to the power of minus 7. Okay, so you'll end up with something like that. And again, it means that's it. The very last stage now is you put this. Put the minus one on it. So we do answer. And a good old friendly reciprocal button from the resistors. So that's the x to the power of minus one. And then running out of space here, we need to press the equal button. And uh, with a bit of luck, maybe we should get the right answer. So we get one, five, Nine nine five six seven point three six three hertz. Okay, let's check. All of that is just about visible on the video. So this is the answer we get. Okay, press the engineering button, and it immediately factorizes it or, or uh, manipulates it rather. Is the correct term? And uh, I'll come back up to here now. So I press the engineering button and I get 1.5 9 
9, lots of other numbers, times 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6 is mega, so what I've got here is 1.5995 673663 megahertz. Okay. Choose where you want to round that. It doesn't matter anywhere roughly here. Anywhere up until here we'll round up. So it's going to be 1.6 megahertz is your final answer. So that's this here. Next resonant frequency is 1.6 megahertz. And hopefully, that'll be what the sheet says. Okay, they haven't gone as far as 1.6, but you can see here, looking at the sheet, they get 1.599 megahertz. Okay, brilliant. Right, so now, I'll try and do that on the calculator screen. Okay, so I've still got the board for reference, unfortunately you haven't, I apologise about that. I believe by the means you've got. Okay, so 45 microhenry is minus 6 plus, nope, wrong, times 220 picofarad, so I'm sent to the minus 12, equals 9.9 times under 15. So, where are we on the ball? Top one there, 9.9 times 10 to the power of 15. Okay, I'm going to square root it now. So on here, square root button is there. Press that, press answer, press equals. 9.9498743711 times 10 to the power of minus 8. Okay, so the next step is to multiply the answer. So. Press answer times 2 times here's the shift button here. Shift button is here. The calculator, top corner, bottom left of the LCD, and then pi there and times 10 to the power of X button. So this button, my thumb is, and this button here to give me the other, the pi. Okay, equals. And I've got 6.25169044 times 10 to the power of minus 7. Answer reciprocal equals 1.5. Where am I on that camera? Sorry. 1.5. I can't see this. I believe you can. Come back for me a little bit. You know, that's it easier. Is it 1.5? Nine nine five six seven. Quickly press the uh, engineering button here. That takes it to one point five nine nine times ten to the power of six. So that's one point five nine nine megahertz. Because of the five nine nine, so five we bring it to one point six. Okay. So that's this one. Let's hop that guy over here a second. All right. Okay. So we'll wrap through that a bit quicker now. One microhenries. 
Nah, let's go for Nemo Henry's. There we go. Alright. Put the formula back up. 2 times pi square root of LC. Okay. And that equals F. So as it talks to me, 1 over 2 pi root LC gives you the resonant frequency. Alright, here we go. So, 71 times 10 to the minus 9. So using the exponent button. Multiply that. 91 times 10 button. And pico is minus 12. And press equals. Okay. Right. Square root button. Then the answer button, and then equals. Okay, so we've now done this. Okay, so now the answer button, times the 2 button, times pi. And don't forget, pi is shift, and the times 10 the power of x exponent button that you've used here and here. That gives you the pi. Right, okay. And again equals. And you've worked at the bottom. Last line. Here. And I'm not doing this on the way along, so we'll find out together. Uh, the last line here, what am I doing? I'm making the reciprocal. Right, so answer. x to the minus 1 button equals again. And that will give you f if your pen has a running. Change colour in it. Okay, so let's lean the camera forward and we'll give it a go, shall we? Here we go then. I'll try and do this as clearly as possible. 71 times 10 to the minus 9 times 91 times only one 10 times 10 to the 12. So that's complacency there. Equals square root of an answer equals answer times 2 times pi. I've got pi shift my thumb times 10 to the power of x. It's a random button down here. Okay, so it equals. Gives me a number here, and you can see that. I hope. Last but not least, answer, reciprocal, 62, 626138281.75. Okay, so press the engineering button, 62.61382875 times 10 to the 6. I specifically chose those values, or I specifically chose just the nano because I think it's going to give me a number in the megahertz now. So, what we've got, before we push the exponent button, is 6261382.75 uh, hertz. Okay, this is the number we got from here. This is our F. This is the resonant frequency in hertz, but more useful to us as an engineer to press the engineer button then to press equals and it will just immediately jump the display for you and you get 62.6138287.5 times 10 to the 6 and we know this times 10 to the 6 is mega so rounding it 62.6 megahertz and that's why I put that nano up there because I think it's going to give me quite a high frequency. Okay. So very quickly then, I'll make two other numbers up. I won't go through them on the board. I'll count that to make some numbers again. 
random. Let's pick 83. I'm going to go for mini Henry this time. And this is going to give us a, a low frequency. I'm going to make a big, quite a big capacitor as well. So we're using PK farads before. I'll, uh, I'll go for nano farads now. Okay, 861 nano farads. Right. So, 83 times 10 milli is minus 3. Okay. Times by 861 times 10 to the x button, nano is minus 9. I press equals, press square root, button, and press answer. I love the square root, and I'll see. I now press answer, times it by 2, and I times it by pi. And we remember pi, and shift, and the exponent button. Okay, I press equals again. Uh, in a rush, I've missed the equals out of here. So, in between these two here, there will be an equals. I haste to, uh, to rush through this one. I've uh, missed the equals out. There's an equals here, let's put it properly. So, I've typed the L value in, I've typed the C value in, I've pressed equals. I've then done the square root of answer, and I should have pressed equals again, and I have now. I've got answer times by 2 times by pi, and I should now have to get pi shift and the exponent button, shift and times 10 to the power of x button here, and I press equals again. So that's the bottom line of this. Finally, I press answer, the minus 1 here, so I press the answer button, I press the x to the minus 1 button, and I press equals again. Let's rattle through that. Okay. Give me a moment. There we go. So, maybe 3. Three, and eight hundred and sixty-one. Excuse me. Okay, and I get a value of five hundred and ninety-five hertz. Okay, I've rounded that from point three five. So that's the value I get here. I knew from those numbers, quite a big inductor and a big capacitor. I was going to get a much slower frequency. We had a megahertz before. We had one megahertz with the book example. We had 60 odd megahertz with the first calculator example. And now we've got a much lower frequency. So it's approximately 600 hertz, 595 hertz. Okay. Okay, so the next thing the book deals with, or the, the bit we missed out rather, is the component values bit. So that's this bit here, and what this deals with is if we're given F and we're given C, or if we're given F and L, we can work the last one out. So this equation here, we've got F, C, and L. If we're given, at the moment, if we're given L and C, we can find F. But what if we're given F and one of the two, so the inductor, the capacitor, and F, we can work out the missing one. So that's what we're going to do next. And I'll change pen colour so we can hopefully see it a little better. Again, start with a clean ball. I'll go through the mass bit quickly when we arrive at what we're about to arrive. So, can you see that okay on the thing? Is that, is that visible? Just about. I'm going to have to go with this, folks, because I can't be dealing with a squeaky pen. Unless this pen's any better. Probably down to which one's easy to see on the video. I guess the second one. We'll go with the E. Uh, sorry, folks. <coughs> okay. Right. Alright. So, 
last one here is a component value. So if we start with f equals 1 over 2 pi root lc. And what we want to do is get to uh, lc out here first of all, because we want the l and c to be optional. So if we multiply both sides by square root of lc, I'm showing you how we get to this is like that. So lc times the square root of lc times f equals 1 over 2 pi. Divide both sides by f, we get square root of lc equals 1 over 2 pi f, where f is the 3 2 1. Okay, get rid of the square root, we need to square both sides. So we've got lc squared equals l times c is 1 over 2 squared pi squared f squared, which is equal to 1 over 4 pi squared f squared. Okay. Two pi. Sorry, I'm sure I get these things right. I'll just look back for you. Probably have already. Okay. So this gives us LC equals four pi squared f squared. So that we can break that out into two equations. L equals one over four pi squared f. Squared c of c equals 1 over 4 pi squared f squared l. And those are both given to you in the book here. This is where can we work to give us those two equations? So l equals 1 over 4 pi squared f squared c of c equals 1 over 4 pi squared f squared l. Note the formula is the same for the L and the C just change places, which is exactly what we see here. L and C, C and L. So they just change places. Okay, so you just pick one of these, remember it. It's a manipulation of that, you haven't got to be able to do that. If you can, it's great. If you can't, don't worry, remember that one as well. And you'll be uh, you'll be only way. Okay. So for this section. I assume you've remembered that. And I'll jot it up here. So L equals 1 over 4 pi squared F squared C. Okay, so. Can we, can we see that on the video? Is that visible? Just about. And the wonky one. Okay. Right then. So, the formula in the book says so we've got a 220 puff capacitor. So, we're given C is 220 pico farad, and F, we're told, is 1.9 megahertz. Okay. Right. So, what we're being asked is we've got the same circuit as before. So we're told C here is 220 picofarad and L we don't know. But we're told we want F equals 1.9 megahertz. Okay. I'll try and keep it the same with the book, so what does the book do? So the way the book does it, it starts with 4 pi f squared c. And then it flips it over to be the reciprocal. So let's give it a go. Right then. So we key in a 4. We multiply that by our pi. And pi squared means pi times by itself. So rather than worry with a fancy button, we'll do that. If you know how to do this, great. If not, times by pi again. And then two pi's together makes you pi squared. Okay, and same with the frequency. So that's 1.9 megahertz. It's 1.9 times 
10 to the power of 6, it would be 1.9 times 10 to the power of 6. Uh, that up there, times 6, times 6. Okay? And finally, on the last line, put this up here as well, but I've run out of room. So times 2, 2, 0, times 10. And we know pK is minus 12. Okay. So this is all on one line, and I'll rewrite it in a moment straight across the board. And press equals. And that will give us a number that means very little. But the reciprocal. That will be your answer. X to the power of minus 1 button. And then equals again. It will give us our value for L. Which is what we want. So. I've got the calculator that I've left over here. Let me write this first of all, or as you'll be a fan of what's going on. Okay, so the formula we're working for is L 4 pi squared f squared c. Okay, and we're told c equals 220 picofarad and f equals 1.9 megahertz. So 4 times pi times pi times 1.9 our exponent button 1.9 megahertz exponent value is 6 so 1.9 times of x of 6 and we're squaring it so we're doing it again 1.9 times 10 to the x of 6 times our value of c which is 220 Pico is times 10 to the value, yeah, times 10 to the exponent of minus 12. Okay, equals. That gives us the bottom half, doesn't mean anything. We need to put that under the bottom, so we use the answer button, the reciprocal button, and we press equals again, and that will give us our value for L, which I haven't calculated. So, Hopefully that's all visible on the board, make the head out of the way. Let's, let's run through it. So lean you forward again for the scary calculator moment. Here we go. How can I get it so that you can also see the board would be great? But I don't know. Can you see the screen in there? Not very badly. We'll run through it. Okay. So four times pi times Pi times 1.9 p6, 1.9 exponent times 10 to the power of 6 again, times 220 times 10 to the power of minus 12. And we get 31,353.75962. Okay, means nothing, but we need to just flip that over now to so answer to the minus 1. Equals, I'm going back to the wall of the pen, I get here 3.189410213 times 10 to the minus 5. Now this 10 to the minus 5 doesn't mean anything to us. We've got to go 10 to the minus 6 or minus 3. Now I go minus, go to the 6, we press the engineering button. And that gives us 31.89 times 10 to the minus 6 Henry's. 10 to the minus 6 we know is micro. 31.89 uh, micro Henry's, yeah? There we go. Okay. Fingers crossed, that's what the book says. Thirty-one point eight nine microhenries. And there we are, just to prove I'm not bluffing you. There, thirty-one point eight nine microhenries. Cool. Just need 
in the number of zones in the book. They don't appear to, so we'll swap them around. And we'll go for the same frequency. Okay, so what will we know? And we know that with L equals 31.89 microhenry, that's true. So what we can do Oh my god. Now we'll swap these values around. Remember we said that they could be swapped. So I can take, put L inside, and I can solve for C. So, what should we do? Let's make a value for L. Roughly, we'll keep it similar, but not exactly the same. So. Um, round them up. Okay, so I'm going to sigma 26.7, that'll do us. So, right, we're going to not use that one. We've got L equals 26.7 microhammers this time. We'll keep F to be the same. We've increased the inductor slightly. Uh, what have we got? Slightly more inductance, this number has become smaller, so it's coming closer to zero. So I'd expect the capacitance value to go, uh, what would we expect? And we need the capacitance value to become a bigger number, less capacitance, more capacitance, rather than. Uh, okay, cool. Is that right? No, we need the other part. Either way, it doesn't particularly matter. We're about to find out. So, we're using, let's get this straight, show you what we've got now. So, take away all of those, we've got the same formula as before. And we now know that F equals 1.9 megahertz, that's the frequency in the book. And that L equals, what did we say? Oh, I forgot. 26.7, I think, yeah, it's 26.7 micro still in the cup, there's a screen. There we go. Okay, so same again. Ready? 4 times pi times pi times s squared. 1.9 times 10 to the x button. Megahertz is 6 times 1.9 times 10 to the x button. And megahertz is still 6. Times 26.7 times 10 to the x button. And microhemories is minus six. Okay. Right. Put that into the calculator. And you're going to press equals. It's going to work at the bottom. Answer button, followed by the reciprocal button. Answer button again. The equals button, sorry and you will get your value for C. So I won't show you on the screen, but I'll run through that. And we should get four. Five squared times one point six squared times, and our value for L is 26.7, times the minus six. Okay. So the answer that I get directly from the calculator, 26279781053 times 10 to the power of minus 10. So this is closer to the minus 9, closer to nanofarads, but that will give us 0 point something, which is it just doesn't seem right. So we'll go for the 12. That's probably what the calculator will give us. So we're going to swap this for a minus 12. That will give us the capacitor value in picofarads again. Okay, so press the engineering button. And that changes, as we expect, 262.7978453 times 10 to the minus 12, which we know to be pk. So we've got around there, 0.8 p 
Pico Berry. We're using a value, if you remember before, the value we had before was 220 Pico Berry. We made the inductor, made a slight change in the inductor. We've gone from 220 to 260, so we've got a slight change in the capacitor. We'll get the fruity the same. So this tells me it's the same, same value, we've got a similar result, a similar number. Slight change here, we've got a slight change in the capacitance value here. The output. Okay. So we now know that the previous calculation was correct, we can assume this one to be in the same order as of magnitude as well. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. And hope you found that uh, helpful. I will at some point try to go through in a much more structured way and get the whole of the RE course done. But hopefully you found uh, so far found it useful. Cheers for watching.